Hey everyone, first off I just wanted to say a huge thank you for how supportive everyone's been for this channel name change thing. I've gotten some really good feedback. Some people weren't sure what my channel used to be called, which I would consider fine, although for historical record it was HLAPS1990, which of course was a nickname I picked up in construction and the year I was born. So I think deep down I really knew that the first video I would make with this new channel name would be a boring one about theory. So, I pose you the question, which motor is the fastest? This NEMA 34, this NEMA 23, or this NEMA 17? Now, straight off the bat, I'll tell you this one has the highest RPM, this one's in the middle, this guy's got the lowest RPM, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this one's the fastest. Let's dive in. So the reason you can't only use RPM for the maximum speed of a motor is because of something called trapezoidal motion. Trapezoidal motion is motion where you're going to accelerate, maintain a constant speed, and then decelerate, hopefully arriving at your destination. Because of inertia, technically all motion is trapezoidal. If you don't plan to properly implement trapezoidal motion, you actually end up limiting your motor's speed because the motor can't accelerate all the way up to maximum speed instantaneously. That would require an infinite torque, which no motor has. So for a stepper motor, you're just gonna stall it early. Most CNC software actually does do trapezoidal motion automatically and all you have to specify is gonna be the acceleration and the max speed. So we're gonna use a couple terms here. The first is gonna be position and that's where you are relative to your target. The velocity is going to be how fast your position is changing, and acceleration is actually going to be how fast your velocity is changing. So imagine this is your car. It's not the nicest car, but it's your car. So if you want to go some distance to get to your destination, you're going to have to get some speed to get there. Of course, being a good little boy scout, you're going to stay under the speed limit. So let's see how your speed changes while you're driving to the destination. You're going to accelerate up to your max speed and then decelerate back down to get to the stop sign without spilling anything. Now let's say you have the exact same car, but you put a whole bunch of weight on it. You're going to be limited in how fast you can accelerate. So you're basically going to accelerate up as fast as you can get to, and then you're going to have to start braking or else you're going to overshoot your target. You never actually got up to your full speed, and this is called being acceleration limited. Now imagine your much more successful friend has this attractive sports car. For him, it's just going to be a matter of accelerating up to max speed and then decelerating to get to his destination. Let's see how they all look together. So you can see when there's a speed limit, the sports car and the normal car aren't really that different. They both just have to get to the speed limit and then they have to slow down and they roughly slow down about the same speed so they end up taking about the same amount of time. If you look at the heavy car, it's spending a lot more time underneath its maximum speed, so it takes a lot longer to get to the destination. Now let's say there is no speed limit. You can clearly see that the sports car gets up to speed extremely quickly. The speed is a lot higher, so it gets to its destination a lot faster. Conversely, the normal car gets up to its modest maximum speed a little slower and has to stay there for longer. So if we're going to move the same load, say in a 3D printer or a CNC mill, the torque of your motor is going to determine how fast you can accelerate. There's some caveats to that, such as the force is changing during CNC milling, but you typically don't encounter that with 3D printing. So now let's look at how the torque and the speed vary between different kinds of motors. The first is a small stepper motor. You can see it has a little bit of torque and it drops off quite quickly as the speed increases. The second is a large stepper motor. It's got a ton of low speed torque, but it really can't go that fast. Finally, you've got your brushless DC motor, like the ClearPath motors I'm using on my 3D printer. They maintain their torque up to a reasonably high speed, and then it drops off when the power becomes saturated. So as you can see from the graph, small stepper motors can go quite quickly, large stepper motors have a lot of torque, and BLDCs maintain their modest torque for pretty high speeds. So let's look at feed moves. Remember, these are moves that you have a speed limit on. Just like in the car example, the BLDC isn't that much faster than the large stepper motor. But the small stepper motor does take a long time because it has to accelerate much more slowly. So a few takeaways from this is that torque is required to accelerate. In linear systems, force equals the mass times the acceleration, or if you rearrange, acceleration equals force over mass. In rotary systems, it's roughly the same thing, but with more Greek letters. So angular acceleration equals the torque over the moment of inertia. 
So what I'm getting at with my 3D printer build is that top speed isn't so important if you don't have enough torque to ever reach it. If you're going to actually apply this in CNC, the feed rate is determined by the chip load, the chip load is determined by the RPM, and the RPM is determined by the surface speed. So relative to 3D printing, you can actually move really quickly in CNC machining. For 3D printing, your feed rate is going to be determined by how fast you can extrude plastic. It's really hard to speed that process up because you actually have to heat the plastic up a lot faster, push it out faster, cool it down faster, and you've got to control the whole process so you don't have a mess on your hands. Feed rates are typically fairly slow in 3D printing compared to CNC machining. So for 3D printing feed moves, rather than have the feed rate up here, it's more like it's down here. And down here you can see that there isn't a huge difference between the three different kinds of motors. For short rapid moves, however, you can see there is a difference. The large stepper motor quickly gets up to its maximum speed, which is kind of not that fast. Uh, the small stepper motor is acceleration limited, so it never really gets up to its max speed and therefore it takes longer. And the BLDC basically wins again. <laughs> For longer rapid moves though, we're going to see something different. So you see the large stepper gets up to its max speed quite quickly, but its max speed isn't actually all that high, so it stays at a lower speed and it takes longer. If you're looking at the small stepper motor, it does take longer to get up to its max speed, but it does get to spend a good chunk of time there before it decelerates to its destination. The BLDC, again, accelerates quickly up to a really high max speed and then decelerates quickly to its position. So from this you can see that small stepper motors actually have to accelerate fairly slowly because they don't have enough torque. Large stepper motors can accelerate really quickly, but they don't have great top speed. BLDCs accelerate fairly quickly and have a high top speed, which is nice. A few other takeaways from this. High acceleration means high forces, which means if you have a light machine, it's going to jump around quite a bit. BLDCs are also expensive and they're often overkill. If you really add up the time savings for only short rapid moves, which is the time I'm trying to save, the difference probably isn't going to be that great. So in summary, low speed high torque motors are faster at short rapid moves. High speed motors often won't reach their maximum speed unless they have enough time or space, which if you have a really big 3D printer it could make sense again, but I don't. And except for really low speed high torque applications, BLDCs are pretty much superior to stepper motors. Alright, so hopefully that wasn't too dry. Uh, in the future I'm hoping to go into more detail in stepper motors because they're so ubiquitous and sort of the kind of work that I do and that I'm sure a lot of you do as well. I'd like to go into sort of how they work and how to control them and things like that. Um, but until then, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers!